right, everyone. Hey, how's it going? Whoa, I just came right at you, didn't I? It's Nick Baldwin, LCA co-founder. I've got my slightly less handsome friend here, Dan Stewart. I'm just kidding, Dan. Very handsome. Dan Stewart. Way less CEO, handsome. Way less CEO handsome. And, and less handsome. CEO and inventor of Happy Grasshopper. He's the inventor of Happy Grasshopper. And also LCA Nurture is a platform that we partnered with Dan on uh, that uses um, some of the cool technology that Dan invented to help you stay in touch with your friends, family, and people close to you. And today we're going to talk about how to run a business like clockwork. Wouldn't that be something if it would just turn like a clock, you won't have to crank it. It's one of those clocks that always turns. It never stops. The battery never has to get changed. That's the kind of business I want to run. And we're going to learn how to do that. Sweet. Dan, that's your cue. <laughs> that's my cue. All right. Sweet. Inventor. So, Inventor, Dan. Uh, you know, more than anything else, I'm a guy who just loves to learn. I really am. Uh, I'm a geek. I, you know, I can't stop reading books. And every now and then I read something I think is really special and I want to share it. And, and my friend, you have, uh, you have my slowly... You have slowly uh, moved away from reading books with pictures to reading books with chapters. That's right. I'm getting there. There's actual words in this book. It's not, not just pictures, right? So anyway, this was written by a guy named Mike Michalowicz, who's a you know, past guest on an LCA webinar. He's a great guy. He's written books like Profit First. I first of all, I love that plan. was what you led with. There's a guy named Mike Michalowicz and he was a guest on LCA. Like that's, yeah. that's what he's That's his for. claim to fame, really. I don't know if he knew that, but that's <laughs> he's what he's written he 10 best-selling books, but you know what? He was in lab coat. No, nope, that's it. That's it exactly. So uh, here's his book, Clockwork. And Nick and I are going to be giving away copies of this today for those of you who hang out with us. And uh, we also, as every webinar where we spend time together, we make sure that our eyes are on the chat constantly. So go yes. ahead and say, hey, let us know that you can see us and hear us. Tell us where you're logging in from. Say hello in the chat now so we know you're there. Yeah, and if you're watching on Facebook, say hello in the comments. Dang, definitely do that. And while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and get prepped to share my screen. Hello, Deborah Coley in San Antonio. Very cool. I'm going to share my sand dune first. Beverly like here in Bloomfield Hill, Hills. Oh, oh, Beverly, you're in Bloomfield Hills. Beverly, I'm in Clarkston. We're neighbors. Not that far. All right, all right. So is that popped up? You guys can see that? Oh, I can see That's that. On your screen? All right, awesome. So uh, let's dive in. We're going to talk about this. Now, the reason this book was written is because each of us who run a business, we can kind of relate to what it feels like to have this experience. You know, you... You start out with the best of intentions. You have a vision, a dream. And unlike most people, you also have the guts to go try to actually make it happen, right? So you study for your test, you pass, you get licensed, and oh, now it's time to do this. You're going to be on HGTV in no time. It's going <laughs> to go so well. Like you just can't believe how amazing your life is. And then at some point, you know, the, the floor just drops out from underneath you right? Oh, that's so sad. It is. It is sad. And yet it's also true for too many people. So if you think about a roller coaster, a lot of agents are trapped on this roller coaster because they keep bumping into a growth plateau they can't break through, right? So they get so busy doing the things that produce business that they actually get so busy. Now the time they used to be doing generating leads is filled with just delivering Right. And then, of course, what happens? They run out of stuff to deliver. They close the deals. And that's where there's this blank open space in front of them that they've got to jump right back on the lead gen. So, you know, the reason agents get stuck at whatever volume it is per year, for some it's 10 transactions, for others it's 50, doesn't matter what that number is. It's always because there's some sort of bottleneck that's preventing you from breaking through. So today we're going to talk about how to break through those bottlenecks. We're going to give you a new framework to really think about how you can run your real estate business to get off the roller coaster 
and actually fulfill all those promises you made to yourself and your family when you got started in this industry to begin with. So part of that means setting goals and then achieving them, right? So our goals today are pretty clear. We are going, whoa, we are going to create owners, which, you know, have you read Extreme Accountability, Nick? You know that book? I have it. I've read aspects it's, of it, yes. Yeah, I mean, that there's this concept where- Oh no, Extreme Ownership? Extreme ownership. Thank you very much. Uh, extreme ownership. You, you can't have uh, this sense that you have to be responsible for absolutely everything and scale. Like you've got to be able to delegate and make sure that the work when it's delegated is going to be done to your standard. So that's more than having somebody you've trained. That's having somebody who's really carrying your song in their heart. They're on a mission to make sure that everything runs smoothly, right? So that's called creating ownership. And, you know, I don't care if it's your remote VA in the Philippines, you can create that ownership mentality with anyone you're working with. So, you know, it, it might be your home inspector. It might be your photographer. It might be the stager that you're working with. Uh, you can set expectations and create a culture for them where they really feel empowered. They feel like they get to be the, the best version of themselves through working with you, right? That, that's a huge gift to be able to give them and also to benefit from yourself. Now, uh, the second item here is about pinpointing efficiencies. So we're gonna talk about beehives a little bit today. That's gonna be part of our conversation because there is so much efficiency that we can observe when we look at a beehive. And we're going to use that as a model to understand our own businesses more, uh, more correctly uh, and to know where we actually need to focus 100% of our time and attention to achieve our goals. Uh, and then the third thing is back to those bottlenecks, right? We have to know what to fix and more importantly, know what to fix next. Like, you know, one thing I love in uh, Gary Keller, uh, his book, The One Thing, uh, he talks about the first domino, right? And, and what's the one thing you can do such that everything else becomes unnecessary, right? And I'm paraphrasing that. I didn't get the quote exactly right, but, you know, it, it just doesn't work so well if you fix something out of sequence. Like there is an right. order in which you should fix things. And today we're really going to, mm -hmm. we're going to nail what that order is for you. So... The goal is to take that experience of being on a roller coaster and to recognize that it's actually a really systematic experience, right? So are you a roller coaster dude, Nick? Uh, I was just having this conversation with someone the other day. Um, I love roller coasters, but every time I'm on one, I'm pretty sure that's, I'm pretty sure that's the end. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm never, never doing this again. Back. Yeah, but I really enjoy going on them. They can be a lot of fun, right? They can be thrilling. Uh, they can be miserable. Um, like the people who design and build the roller coaster, they're not responsible for your experience of it. They're responsible for every single curve in the track, every nut and bolt, all the engineering tolerances. I mean, Aside from the experience of being on a roller coaster, let's recognize that it is a highly designed process. It mm -hmm. has a clearly defined beginning, middle, and end. It's very consistent. Like Nick may experience that ride differently than I do. He might love it, I might hate it, or vice versa. And yet we went on exactly the same ride. Okay. So let's recognize that your business is a systematic experience and you're riding it along with all the clients that you serve. So if they're not having a good time, it's time to think about how you might change the systematic experience. And if you're not having a good time running your business, it's absolutely time to change that systematic experience. Life is too short to pour your blood, sweat, and tears into a business you don't love. It just is. Like, you, you've taken bold, I assume, Nick? I have. Yeah, My name like, is Nick and I'm bold. <laughs> that's right. Thank you. So like one of the things that we learn in bold, 
you know, is that our, our business exists to create an amazing lifestyle. Like its purpose is to serve us. We're the people who are pouring the most into that. So, you know, you better, you better absolutely have a business that's designed to achieve your personal goals. Otherwise, why the heck are you even bothering? Right? The problem is how this sounds great, Dan, I'd love to do this. I'd love to have a business. How do I do this, Dan? Goals. But how do I freaking do it? Right? How do I make how that do happen? I do this? I'm, I need to know I need to change my life and everything about it. <laughs> well, one of the ways that we're going to do it is by uh, AC. Whoa! Yeah, that's right. We're going to we're going to look to our friends at ACDC here for a little bit of the solution. And that solution specifically is attract, convert, deliver, collect. Right? So those are the four common elements of every business you can think of. Uh, my business, your business, anyone's real estate business, a software company, a garbage collection company, they all have a duty to attract clients. They've got to convert those prospects into sales. They have to deliver on their promise, their product and service, and then they have to get paid, right? They have to do that. So, you know, right now, if you're watching this, go ahead and get ready to take some notes here. I want you to think about what it is that you're doing to attract people to your business. Like, how do you attract people, Nick? Where are you attracting your clients? Where do they come to you? I mean, from? I just, I mean, I just show up and no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, you know, I'll, my clients are from friends, family, my, uh, you know, a lot of connections through uh, social media, just relationships. A lot of my clients and businesses relationships. Yeah. I mean, that's the first thing on my list here for a reason. Like you can build a business in lots of different ways. And I don't believe there's one right way to do it. I do believe there's one more right way for each of us to do it. So I have members who are totally focused on digital lead generation. That's all they're really focused on. They don't do a ton of business with past clients and sphere. They don't get a ton of referrals. That's not part of what their model is. So on the screen right now, you're seeing the most common ways leads are generated in real estate. You know, take a moment, uh, write it down, ask yourself. So in my business, how am I attracting clients? Do I have a website that's generating IDX leads? Am I buying leads from a portal? Like, do I, I get out there and knock on doors now that uh, it's starting to be safe to do that? Um, am I an open house person? Where is business coming from, right? You need a plan uh, for attraction. You, you shouldn't just, like Nick was joking around when he said, just hang out and hope it shows up. Uh, you need a <laughs> plan, that. right? We need a systematic plan here. And then, of course, once we've attracted that opportunity, we've got to have a plan to convert it. So, you know, we're going to talk about this section here. Uh, convert is really, really important. So whether you have a, somebody signing in at an open house or visiting your website or if you're buying leads from a portal, uh, you need to have a way to keep in touch with them over time, right? You, you absolutely need that. And then, of course, you've got to have a way to re-engage all the old leads that you've generated. So you know, what, I, what I've put on the screen here now is the communication process that you know, 10 years of service, hundreds of millions of sends per year has taught us is most effective. So if mm -hmm. you want to convert more of those leads you're generating, start acknowledging them according to the source they come from and the time of day that they show up. Okay, so I'll give you an example. If somebody signed in at your open house, you want to treat that person differently than if they, they landed on a home valuation page, right? If they're an IDX search that comes in at 10 a.m., you want to treat that differently than an IDA, IDX search that comes in at 2 a.m., right? Don't pretend right. you're alive and awake, ready to serve people if you're not. No. Right? And That's then once you've piece. acknowledged the lead, you have to teach them why it is that they should actually want to work with you, right? So think of it this way. If you have past clients who love you, why? What, what is it that they love about you? 
those are the things you need to teach these leads, right? Because a, a, to a brand new lead, we're all just another agent until we've built some kind of relationship with them, right? It's a privilege to be their agent. And to get to be their agent, we have to teach them what our past clients and sphere really love about us. Um, and then of course, we've got long-term nurturing, right? And, and I know there are a lot of solutions, a lot of different ways you can nurture people in a database. You know, if you've got an IDX site, uh, you're almost certainly sending property search updates and price change alerts. Very normal. It makes a ton of sense to do that sort of thing. Sorry, Sorry I'm back. Also, what's that, Nick? What's that, Nick? I I, I thought my my computer froze for a moment. You're back. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I'm back. <laughs> You're back. So, um, yeah, back to the nurturing phase. Like they're getting all those search alert updates. That's fine. But average lead is registering with 10 different agents before they're ready to transact. You need to have content that really helps you stand out from that. So I recommend including nurturing content that includes content that shows how you're connected to the area that they're searching in, right? So you know, talk about your favorite restaurants, talk about the parks you love, talk about the great places to visit. Uh, there, there's all sorts of value in letting them see you as a human being rather than as just another, you know, just, just another real estate agent. We don't want them to think of you that way. So this is uh, a process you can work through for converting leads. If you need help with that, just reach out to me here in the chat, uh, connect with me via email, dan at happygrasshopper.com or find me online in, uh, in Facebook or in the LCA group in Facebook. Uh, and it looks like we may have lost Nick here. So uh, I'll go solo here for a bit. You guys are in good hands. Um, let's talk about delivery, right? So you've attracted someone, you've converted them. They're now your client. You're actively helping them sell their house. You're actively helping them buy a home. Well, that's the delivery phase, right? So everything you're seeing on the, the screen right now, these are the items of work that most people do in most transactions. You may have some things that aren't on this list. Uh, you may see things on the list here you've never thought of actually doing, but I want you to begin thinking about how much of your actual time, how much of your available hours in a given work week are you spending on each of these things? You know, if, if you're a buyer's agent, you might be spending most of your time showing properties and writing offers. Uh, if you're a listing agent, it might be, you know, preparing property to list and adding it to the MLS. Um, whatever it is, it's important that you know it and you define it, right? Because all of these activities, every single thing that we do can be broken down into just four categories. And those four categories of work are going to allow us to really take control of this roller coaster experience and make it serve us. Okay, so let's take a look at the four types of work. Uh, we've got them here on the screen now. We've got do, decide, delegate, and design. And we're going to start here with design. You know, to some extent, all of us need to live with one foot in the future. What are we going to do this week that's going to allow us to achieve our goals? Right? Ultimately, what kind of business do I intend to build? Uh, immediately prior to this call, I, I talked with just a wonderful broker in Northern California who is also in the wine business. Like, how cool is that? He's got two prospering businesses and he's at a crossroads. Like, where should he focus? Which place should he go? And, you know, my advice there would be life is short. You should do what you find fulfilling. And yet, if you've built multiple businesses in multiple areas, like look for ways they can integrate. You know, how could he combine what he's worked so hard to build in the real estate world uh, with this new venture uh, in the wine business? Like, it, it's a really neat thing. So that's the sort of project you're working on when you're in the design quadrant. If you're focused on how to do stuff, how work gets done, you're in the design phase. And there's a portion of every day that you should spend focused on nothing but design. Now the delegate category here, this is really, really important for you to master because 
you know, this list of the work that happens in real estate, guess what? It does not all have to be done by you. Uh, you can certainly delegate tasks here and assign them to people to make sure that uh, the work gets done properly. And when you're doing that the right way, as we talked about earlier, you end up uh, delegating to someone who's really taking ownership over it being fulfilled to your standards. So uh, delegation of work is, is an art and science. It's important. Um, deciding, like something pops up, you have to make decisions all throughout the day. They're, like each of you are making a choice to be here with us now. You, you could choose to answer your phone when it goes off in just a moment, distract yourself from this. Just know that the, the power that you're able to create in your life is nothing more than the effect of all the different decisions that you make throughout the day. So I'm gonna encourage everybody to really be deliberate about how they're investing their time, deciding to put it in the right place. Um, essentially, what you're doing in this quadrant is saying to yourself, is this a task that I'm gonna do or is this a task that I'm gonna delegate, right? And as you grow and you build a team and an organization, they should be empowered to say, oh, this thing happened, I'm gonna do it or I'm gonna delegate it, right? There's a, a, a process for that, it's called a decision tree. So something happens and you just, you know, it's, it's very binary. Are you gonna do it or are you gonna delegate it to someone else? So uh, in the book, Mike talks a lot about what the optimal mix would be here. Like, wouldn't it be cool if we had an idea how much of our time we're supposed to be spending in each of these quadrants? And, you know, this is his opinion of what that optimal mix is of these four things that we have to do, right? So doing, I mean, that's fully 80, you know, that's 80 of the, the 100 things, we're at 80. That's 80% 80 of our time we're spending doing. Uh, the deciding is relatively small. That's because we've thought this out. We have a process. Like we're not surprised when stuff goes sideways. Like we know that sometimes homes don't appraise. We know that offers don't get accepted. We know that inspections create issues. So rather than being confronted with each of those as if it's a new decision, we should have a plan in place about what happens when those things occur. Um, you notice how large delegate is here when you're delegating work to someone, it's not just, oh, it's their problem now. It also includes a management loop. Like you need to have a check-in with them to make sure that everything was done properly. That's a huge time savings from doing it yourself. And yet, you know, you'll surely be stressed at night if you're worried about, did they actually do that thing? So when you delegate, you want to make sure you've designed a way to get some feedback there that the work was actually done. And, you know, as I look at, at my day, this is where I get my joy, like designing, thinking, creating. Oh, this is such an amazing payoff. Like it feels so wonderful to just sit there and imagine what could happen. How could we do something? It's a really satisfying thing to do. And yet, you know, I can only really allot about 10% of my time because, you know, 80% of my time, I should be focused on doing the things that only I can really do. Okay. So Nick, how are we tracking on this? I lost you there for a minute. Uh, glad that you made it back. Sounds like you're muted. I don't know what was going on with my, uh, I had to switch my, to my laptop. Was, I'm glad you're back. My, my desktop was bugging out. <laughs> glad you're back. Okay, cool. So thinking about these, um, these tasks, right? The 40s that we have to do, uh, ACDC, attract, convert, right? All these things that have to happen. Uh, we're going to run into bottlenecks along the way. We absolutely are. Um, do you have a bottleneck right now in your business? Me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to um, hire a good virtual assistant to do some stuff for me. So I'm looking for that right now because I'm bogged down with some stuff I don't need to be doing, which is exactly what you were just talking about. Yeah. What sort of uh, stuff would you have that VA do? Uh, upload my videos to YouTube, send out newsletters through MailChimp, obviously through LCA Nurture as well. Um, you know, edit, edit my podcast, you know, things like that. 
because but the time I spend doing that, I could be doing other things that yeah. make me money. Yeah. There's always stuff that, you know, we, we feel like we could do. And early on, before we've got the resources, we have to do it. We don't even have the choice. But, um, you know, we talk about growth plateaus. Like I think of the, the clients we serve across the country. It seems like a pretty common spot where agents run into, ah, how am I going to do this stuff? Is right around 20 transactions per year. You know, some may get well above it. Some may hit that plateau at 12 or fewer transactions. We all have our own limit there. But when we, we brush up against that, what's stopping us from you know, rising above that is always some sort of bottleneck. So I'm going to go back here a few slides because if we're looking at the ACDC model and, you know, let's say, uh, gosh, I set a goal this year. I want to have 25 sides, right? Well, what has to happen for me to do that? I have to have a plan to attract the number of people it would take for me to close 25 sides. Is that number 25 people? Almost certainly not. It's some number larger than that. Uh, maybe I'm a really horrible salesperson and, and to actually close 25 deals, I'll have to start with, you know, 50 or a mm -hmm. hundred More than that, probably. Uh, potential clients, right? Yeah. Um, maybe the market conditions are so challenging that, gosh, I'm writing 10 offers and I'm only getting one accepted. So if you're going to close 25, you want to have some realistic expectation of how much activity you have to have to create that. So maybe your bottleneck is in lead gen. You're not getting enough leads to possibly hit your goal. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe that's not the problem at all though, right? Maybe you're, you're attracting tons of leads. Like, whew, I can't even tell you how many agents we've served where, you know, day one, they have a thousand plus old dead leads in their database, stuff that just never converted. I think, wow, you know, every single one of those people has to live somewhere. Why didn't they do business with this agent? It's almost always not because the agent is bad or can't help them. It's almost always because they just weren't ready yet at the time they showed up as a lead for that agent. So, you know, that's where re-engaging them. Like, whew, if you need more closings now, you can start by re-engaging people who jumped in your database a year or more ago. Uh, they almost certainly are, are closer to being ready or they know someone who is ready now. Right. So converting those leads can often be a bottleneck. Uh, when we see an agent who's investing enough money to generate the leads, but not closing enough of them to have the profits that they need to scale, that's a growth plateau, right? That's another bottleneck that they have to bust through. Uh, and of course, the the biggest one is this concept of delivery. All that work that has to be done in order to serve your clients, that can be a real bottleneck. So like Nick is just talking about hiring a, a virtual assistant to help with these things. There's something that VA can do. Uh, running to the property and taking pictures is not one of them. No. Like, you know, coaching your be... clients is no. not one of them. They can't help you with staging, no. right? They, they're not gonna be negotiating. There are some things here that clearly only Nick should be doing. Um, and there's other things that he's going to want to push off his plate and never touch again. So, you know, the purpose of doing this, the purpose of, of taking the time to review this is so you can get some clarity about the sort of stuff you're willing to work on and the sorts of things that you need other people to work on. Right. So now we're going to, we're going to talk about how to break these bottlenecks by exploring a concept called the queen bee role. Have you ever heard of this, Nick? No. I, I really kind of dig the queen bee role. Uh, when, when I attended the clockwork conference and uh, Adrian Dorison and Mike were teaching this, uh, it, it wasn't immediately clear to me what the heck it even meant. And then I really had to spend some time thinking about what my queen bee role actually is. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. My wife and I, we live on a horse farm down in Tampa and uh, she has a beehive. Like it's way out in the woods behind our back pasture. 
and uh, you know she she keeps the bees and harvests the honey, and you know if you if you've ever done this or you know somebody who does, when you order a hive, you get this box delivered in the mail that's filled with bees. Yeah, and the the most important bee in that box is the queen bee. Uh, wherever she goes, the rest of the bees are going to follow, right? In fact, the only reason that hive exists, like the only reason those other bees are there is to serve the needs of the queen bee. Like if she dies, the hive dies. Like her purpose, the reason she exists is to create more bees. She has to be there. So, you know, think about your business right now. What is your queen bee role? You know, hmm. and, and also consider that the queen bee role of your business may be different than your actual queen bee role. Okay. So I'll, I'll share my thoughts about this as it relates to my company, Happy Grasshopper. Are you the queen bee in your in your company? I am. I am not the queen bee. Uh, the The queen bee is the output that our company does. Right. So. You know, think about it. We can do a lot of things wrong. We could have a tech failure. We could have crappy marketing. <laughs> we could have a low conversion rate. And, you know, all of those things could be improved. But if we have bad content, like that, that doesn't work. Like that would put us out of business, right? We have to have messaging that creates results for people. And for us, we measure that by creating a conversation. So our queen bee role is to create and deliver messaging that causes a conversation to happen between our clients and the people in their databases. That's the queen bee role. We can get a lot of other things wrong, but as long as we get that right, we're viable. So to solve for that, I have a team of people. I have copywriters on staff, right? And, you know, the copywriter's queen bee role is different than the queen bee role for the overall company. Like the thing a copywriter's got to be able to do really effectively is uh, scan the data to understand what people want more of mm -hmm. and to interview our members to create content that really specifically fits their needs. Now, you know, in, in my business, we also have people like support reps, and, you know, think of a bookkeeper, like the, the queen bee role of a bookkeeper is, has nothing to do with the queen bee role of what we do as company. Right? So what do you think your queen bee role might be, Nick? You've got your, your hands in several different things, right? You're a dad, you're a multiple homeowner, you've got you this know, great listen. lab coat agents group. You know, Listen, you're speaking, comes, you're consulting, you're writing, you're podcasting, and stop, somehow you're also transacting real estate and all of this. Uh, stop, keep going, Dan. I mean, there's um, a lot. There's a lot there. My queen bee role is to be a dad and a husband. I mean, that's what it comes down to. I know that sounds cliche, but honestly, like, what is all of it worth if that's not what I'm doing the, doing okay. the best at? So I, I think that might be why you're doing everything. That's my why. You know, it's for your family, for sure. But that's different than your queen bee role. So my queen bee role in my business? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, it's so, so many queen bee roles. So many queen bee roles. Um, Let's I take mean, one business. It depends on what. It depends Let's take on one what, business and break it down. Yes, okay. take one of my many businesses, Dan. Well, so let's talk about your real estate business right now. So I... Uh, my real you know, estate business, I'm, at, I'm not actively selling real estate right now. So let's go back into consulting and coaching and training and lab coats. So okay. my consulting queen bee role would be to, I'm always lead generating for new brokerages and agents to help. So that's really like my number one job. And just like a real estate agent, lead generating for listings. I'm lead generating for clients to mm -hmm. teach and train. So that's okay. number one. All right. So there, there's some aspects of that queen bee role that make a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Like they would be consistent in every business, but the, the real queen bee role would be the thing you specifically do in your consulting, 
that's oh, well, I'm the consultant, to you, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm one of the consultants. I have a couple. Right. So, so getting the customers uh, and actually serving them well are two different things. Correct. So thinking just to that delivery quadrant, when you're actively consulting with someone, right? There's something you do that's really more important than anything else. Something that it, as long as you get that right, the business is viable. And, you know, when you get it wrong, the business is not viable. So, you know, I would suspect that your queen bee role in a consulting business would be to deliver actionable, effective advice. I would have to say that I agree with you. Does that sound right? Okay. Yeah. Because I'm swagging a little bit here, but. You, you know, are. Would, you got a lot of swagger. I think that's pretty close. Um, so, you know, we'll shift gears. We'll take a look at lab code agents. Okay. Right. I mean, we were with you guys since day one. Think about all this growth, all these things. It's so, it's so hard for people to imagine how big something can be and then to, you know, blink your eyes twice and all of a sudden, you know, almost 10 years have gone by and there's how, like how many members right now? hundred and thirty. Well, LCA is six and a half years old, but, um, but uh, yeah, what my queen be, yeah, it's been six and a half years, 140,000 members, but then we have right. other other platforms where people follow. Bob, what's my queen bee role in lab coats? So my title is, uh, you know, is COO, but I guess that's, I mean, we all wear a lot of different hats, but I would have to say like, you know, Tristan and I are the, we have a lot of leverage now. We've got Jake, Tessa, Sandra, Alex, yep. you know, we have a lot of leverage now, Dan. So a lot of that stuff uh, we're not doing anymore. So we're just kind of, again, creating content, um keeping the members engaged um just providing training and value you know that and coming up with ways to just stay ahead of the game like tristan and i just do a lot of that stuff and putting ourselves um you know making sure that we're always front and center and people know uh who we are in terms of lab coats and keeping the culture positive there's a lot of queen bee roles in yeah. lab coats yeah, and Tessa's queen bee role is a lot different than yours and Tristan. Yeah, Tessa's right? is a her queen bee role is sponsors. You know, Sandra, her queen bee role is, I mean, she kind of oversees everybody, making sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Dan handles the newsletter. Now we're working on our LCA premium app, so we're starting to have uh, people are starting to get that up and running, uploading the content, making sure that it's ready to launch in July. So there's a lot of things going. On. So a lot of things, <laughs> there, there's always a lot of things. And that's, that's why it gets so challenging because, you know, we have lots of different people responsible for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And it's by having this conversation with them about their queen bee role and what's most critical to them. And, you know, stating clearly, Tessa, I'm so grateful that you're here and you're part of this because I know I can trust you to handle this and that and this and the other thing. Uh, really naming those things and just exploring it, having that conversation is how we transfer ownership from ourselves to them. And uh, I agree, Jake, he's saying in the chat, she's amazing and so is Sandra, they are, <laughs> they are. I uh, didn't see Tessa today. Usually she logs in before the, the webinar goes live. So I hope she's awesome. Um, so in terms of um, a typical real estate agents business as if there is such a thing right because you know, every market is different and every person's background is different and how they serve it um, the only thing typical about it would be that they all have to attract convert deliver and collect on the sales that they make so um, if you think about segmenting your business into those four d's whether you're doing it yourself you're deciding uh, to delegate it to someone else. And then of course, uh, designing that future. Um, if you spend say 20 minutes at the beginning of each day, and you really think about what's most important for you to achieve during the scope of that day, uh, you can gain a lot of power and leverage over your destiny with these things. So that's the purpose of sharing this with you today is to help you grab onto some of these concepts that have been useful for myself, and for other people who've gone through the Clockwork Conference. 
So again, the book is Clockwork by Mike Michalowicz. And yeah. uh, Nick and I have some copies of this for you. Mike's a so, good guy. Profit First, that's a great book too. Different topic. But... Yep, totally different topic. His goal is to be the, the most prolific small business author on the planet. Oh, that's a good, and, that's a I good... mean, that's a pretty cool goal, right? Well, yeah, but there's not an, I don't think, yeah, I don't think there's enough that focuses on that, right? Like everything is about like getting bigger and growing and scaling. And it's like, okay, I just want to run this coffee shop, like on my, in my town, you know, what do I do? You know what I mean? So I did that. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing. It's just like uh, you work so hard to get a license in real estate, but you learn how to be licensed. You don't really learn how to transact. You don't really learn the business of real estate. You know, there are a lot of small business out, small business owners out there who are great. Like they can cut hair wonderfully. They can make wonderful food. And, and yet the idea of how to actually run that business to where their life is under their control and they're not feeling like they're run ragged all the time. Uh, that's a daunting problem for a lot of people. And I think it's pretty cool that, uh, that Mike Michalowicz is working hard to do that. So, yeah, no, I agree. Um, I agree for sure. Um, this is awesome. You had a lot of great content here, Dan. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think there's there's some good stuff here. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to claim credit to this, right? I'm just going to thank Mike for working so hard and, and impacting my life in a positive way. Just well, how do you want to give bit. a book away? How do we want to do that? Well, I, the way that we're going to give the book away is pretty straightforward. So, you know, if you're here now and you're not already a member of Lab Coat uh, Agents LCA Nurture, service you should be and to do that you just go over to happygrasshopper.com slash lca nurture and when you're there you're going to see am i sharing the right screen there is that popped up for you yeah i see it okay awesome so you know all you have to do is go over there and click start trial and our system's going to go to work for you it's going to let you uh, create your free trial we're going to send your login credentials right to you Uh, You're going to get LCA Nurture totally free for 14 days. And the first three people to do that, I'm going to ship this book to. So, Oh, that's awesome. uh, Happygrasshopper.com slash meet LCA Nurture. You can read all about the service here and see some of the amazing things that we've done for other LCA members. Uh, Deborah, I see your question. She's asking if if it syncs with Lion Desk, and the answer is yes. Uh, we do have an integration with Lion Desk and hundreds of other services, yeah. including Command and Follow Up Boss. And then, and then, and then. Please be aware, though, that LCA Nurture is for people that you know. Like if you bumped into them in a grocery store and they saw your face, they would know your name. Like that's what LCA Nurture is for. It's not yeah. for new leads you haven't met. These are for, this is for people that you know, and you're cultivating your, your relationships with them. So absolutely. thank right. you for bringing that up. Your sphere, your past clients. Uh, if you think about all those people in your database and, and imagine them bumping around the grocery store with you, whoever it is that's saying hello, those are the people that should be in this database. Yeah. And, and um, just so you know, also, you know, you don't really have to do much, you know, it tells you when new content is ready and you log in and you decide which, what you want to send. That's true. We got Father's Day coming up right now. So it's time to jump in there, get your messaging plan mapped out for June. Uh, There's all sorts of things in there right now that are great to communicate. Uh, I will point out there's three types of message there for you. There's email, there's text messaging, and there's also voicemail content. So that goes out uh, throughout the year. Uh, you'll notice with the email, it's once every three weeks. So that's once every 21 days, 17 times per year. We'll notify you it's time to choose a new email message, or you can set it to just go out automatically, whichever you prefer. Uh, we'll text and send a ringless voicemail drop for birthdays, for transaction anniversaries, and also once a quarter. So once every 90 days we send lead harvesting messages out to your past clients and sphere. And then all of that is supported with up to six holiday messages that you choose throughout the year. So super comprehensive plan. Uh, Also includes a a free integration with Revaluate when you purchase the annual plan. 
So uh, that's pretty awesome because you get to see when those folks uh, are highly likely to move. Oh, that's uh, cool. So for those of you who don't know, it's like predictive analytics. It lets you know who in your database, you know, and that's another thing. Like it tells you like who you know, right? In your database who might yeah. want to move. It's not strangers. Yeah, it's, it's really good to, I mean, you'll know these people, right? So like when I'm logged into my account, and I see somebody's name pop up, uh, I know exactly who they are. It, you know, there's no question there. Uh, so you need to have that, that same sort of expectation is that when you're sending our content out, people are gonna reply really quickly. Like, uh, you know, I know this might be small for some of you on your screens. This is a message we wrote about Blockbuster Video. And, you know, this produced huge opportunity for the agent. He got a come list me reply. And then, you know, just what, later that same day, he got another reply leading to one and a half to $2 million in business just from a, an email message about Blockbuster. So, uh, just so you guys know, on like, the oh, I was going to say like, <clears throat> you know, this is a lot of the, I mean, the content is very conversational. You can choose what um you know what something is you can choose something that you think you would send mm -hmm. and you can edit it to make it sound a little bit more like you if you want to um and you know i've always been about 60 to 70 percent sphere of influence and a lot of that comes from this type of stuff you know it's all and i love it because it's not sales like yeah you know, it's conversational and it yeah. reminds them that you're a realtor without reminding them you're a realtor. It's like, tell me you're a realtor without telling me you're a realtor. Like that's, you know, that's what it is. I love that meme. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump into an actual account here. So you okay, can go get for a, it. a sense of what that looks like. Let me just log in here to my account. So uh, first things you'll notice here when we get to the dashboard is it's notifying us what the upcoming messaging opportunities are. Like that's right there in front of us. If I had any unread text messages waiting for my response, they'd be there. Uh, when I scroll down a little bit, I see my contacts that have that reevaluate score, who's highly likely to move in the next six months. Uh, and of course, I'm also notified about upcoming birthdays and transaction anniversaries uh, for my past clients in Sphere. So, uh, we'll notify you. We'll say, hey, Nick, it's time to choose a new message. Uh, you'll come to a place like this inside the app. These are the live messages that are currently available right now. So you get to rate them. Like this message, it's not a bad message. I just didn't love it personally. It's about, you know, Apple making these really super high audiophile level um, headsets. And you know, to me, that's kind of like, okay, but not super, super cool. Yeah. Where I personally love this story about Bunny, the talking dog. I, oh, do I've seen Bunny? this. I've seen this on TikTok. This is so cool. Like it they've got this cool. augmented uh, communication device where the dog can press these buttons on the floor yeah. to and communicate they say with their owners. It's and it says so like, cool. hungry, treat, outside, potty. Yeah. Yeah. And lately, uh, she's asking some really interesting questions. Are like, there new the, videos of? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I mean, we link right to the article here. You get to see Bunny at work answering these uh, or asking questions and answering questions. Uh, it, it's super neat. Like, there's all kinds of cool stuff uh, that we write about. And, you know, admittedly, this would be super weird to send to a new lead. And yet, it's totally fine to send to a friend or a past client. So... Uh, I'll show you another example here. Like this one hits me where I live, the forgotten generation, because I am a card carrying member of Generation X. So, you know, this message is about, um, you know, if, if you're Gen X and you have a lot of past clients that sphere Gen X, this is really going to fit that group. Now, if I'm a digital native, maybe this isn't a message I send. That's okay. That's why we have a variety of messages in there for you to choose from. Yeah, it's awesome. Right. So um, I'm going to switch over to uh, lead harvesting messages. Like once a quarter, we'll say, hey, it's time to send one of the lead harvesting messages. <clears throat> I'll come here to the library. 
and uh, we'll just preview this offer help message. It's Dan, how are you? It's been a little while since we touched base. Is there anything I can help you with? That's a text message to past clients and steer. Uh, you know, if I send that to a friend and don't get a reply, I'd be stunned. Uh, average reply rate that we're getting for these texts is a little over 80%. So for that reason, you want to not do this too much. Like once a quarter is fine for this type of message, you'll yeah. be overwhelmed with response. Um, and then I'll show you a quarterly lead harvesting message for voicemail drop. In fact, I'll show you Barry's script here. Um, we featured this on the page I showed you earlier. Uh, this is uh, his friends and family program, right? So that's perfect lead gen to your past clients and sphere. You can't do it all the time, but once every 90 days, uh, once every 90 days or so, it works great. And uh, his story with this, by the way, did he tell you this, Nick? I don't, I don't know if you, I can't recall. Were we on the last one? When he, no, you were uh, with he us when we had Barry on, on there, yeah. during the session. On. So he sent the voicemail drop out. He got two replies the next day that became two listings. Oh, right? yeah, 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 Damn, yeah, yeah. This I heard just about happened. that. And then 11 days later, he got a third one from the what? same message. So, I mean, come on. Like, you, I mean, you know there's business in your past. Come life. on. Yeah. Come on. You just got to send it. So, all this is totally free for you for 14 days. So, go to happygrasshopper.com slash meet LCA nurture. And again, the first three people to start that, I'm going to send out this clockwork book to you. So. You know what? 14 days for free. Get a few listings and then cancel. No, I'm just kidding. Don't cancel. Keep it going. You're going to get hooked. There's a lot here. Like once you, you start having conversations cards. with people, you start getting those replies. It just feels so much fun to stick with. So. I hope that's helpful, everybody. I, I certainly appreciate your having me here I love, today, Nick. Yeah, this Thank is good you for stuff. that. Okay. I definitely, listen, like, honestly, and it's like what? Like, how much is it? Like 30 something for, what is it? How much per month? Uh, it's $470 for the year. Oh my gosh. So that's it's like 47 bucks per month. Some uh, of the CRMs out there are 500 bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're very, very purpose built for this one category. Like this is not what you want to use for every contact in your database. It's just perfect for your past clients. And stuff. Yeah, Deborah says, thank you. This is cheaper than an assistant. Yes, it is. It basically says, hello, Deborah. <laughs> it looks like we have to email your sphere influence today. Which email would you like to send? Oh, thank you for asking me. I will go in and look. <laughs> you know Dang. what I mean? Yeah, it's it's super straightforward. And actually, when you're in there for the first time and you're setting up your account, uh, we have an automated wizard that runs that helps you get it set up. It takes maybe 10, 15 minutes. And okay. you'll be sending out your very first messages. So is the wizard that, you with a wizard hat? You can wear a wizard hat if you like. No, is I mean, it you with a wizard hat on? Fine. So I'm not cool enough to own a wizard hat. Oh. Maybe maybe someday, but I'll just give you an idea. Like here, I'm going to come back to the dashboard. There's this button in the upper right to restart the tour. And oh. that just guides you through Let's every single wizard. thing you need to know oh, how that's to not do. A, that's not like a yeah. wizard. Like It's a guided tour. I know, but you should have and like a picture of a wizard there. I don't have a picture of a wizard. But every section you click on, you'll see that button is here, and you can grab the training for that particular area. That's super cool. So that makes it pretty simple. And then, of course, we also have live support within the app. And then we've got this huge training video library that just shows you how to do everything inside your account. So that's awesome. We do what we can for sure. And you're always doing more. Well, I like that. I think, you know, if we're not growing, we're dying. I'll try to grow. I do that. That's very morbid. Thank you for ending that way. Um, this has been great. Um, I always love this type of stuff. And it's so simple. Like a, a lot of agents will overthink how to get business. Listen, right now, you know, I heard a stat, by the way. What was I on where I heard this stat? Shoot. Um, it was some, uh, I think it was a webinar podcast we were doing. Something like 65% of homeowners don't know how much their home is worth. 
Mm. I can't remember who told me that stat, but I'll have to look it up. You guys Google it if you're watching. The point is, uh, you know, that means a bunch of your people, a bunch of people you know in your database don't know how much their home is worth. And listen, there's no inventory. This is the time, right? If they were thinking of selling two years ago, like that, the lake house I just bought, two years ago, they tried to list it. It was on the market for six months mm -hmm. and nobody bought it. And then they listed it again and we bought it. It sold in a day. Bam. You know, with like five other offers. So it's happening everywhere. Well, congrats again on snapping that place up. Can't Thanks, wait to see all the, the summertime lake picks with your family. That's, I will. That's my queen bee roll is going to my lake house. That's my there queen. you go. <laughs> there you go. So I've got some book announcements to make here. So uh, Karina Moore, we're sending a book to you. You're oh, wow. We already that. got signups. Uh, Christina Clayton, we're sending you a book. And that means I've got one more book. That's come, on, come on, Deborah. Come on, Deborah Coley. In there. We'll Deborah Coley, on come on. <laughs> so. That's so cool. Live signups right on the webinar. That's I love how it. we do it. That's how we do it. That's so, how we do it, baby. Christina and Karina, thank you very much. Uh, if you need any help at all with your LCA Nurture account, again, click the live chat button. Uh, you can reach out to our staff. Uh, we're all here to help and to serve. We really just want to make sure that you're well handled, well taken care of. So um, awesome. Deborah says she's going to sign up after she has a, she has something at six o'clock. So right after that's over, she says she's going to sign up. I can't promise you a book though, Deborah, because well, this is hot stuff. <laughs> this is hot stuff. Come all righty, on. Mr. Baldwin. Thank you very much for another session. I appreciate it. Thank you to all of you. Oh, she for just did it. She just did it. She just did it. Deborah yeah. just signed up. All right. We gave all the books away. Yep. There it is. It came Boom. in. Boom. Love it. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Great way to <laughs> end. Great way to cool. end. I love the real time. Love, love <laughs> that, was, that was super fun. Yeah. Cool. All right, Dan. Have a great night, buddy. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. See you, Nick. See you later. All right. Bye. Thank you.